Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profitex Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning real estate development in PHP. This is our part 8. Inside this video session guys, we are going to make an API which basically read single data. In the last video, we had seen that how can we list all the data what we have saved inside our database table. If I back to Postman, now this is the route or let's say that this is the API which we have developed called list-all.php which brings all the data what we have inside tbl underscore students table. If I back to code editor, now this is the file actually where we had worked in our last video. Now inside this video, as we know that we are going to make an API which basically for a specific data. What does it mean? It means that from this block of data, if suppose we want to read only this second block, means if I back to table, click on this TBL students link. Now inside this table, we have four rows. Let's say that we are going to make an API which prints or dump only data for this second row. Or if we want about the details of only this fifth number ID means Sunil, then a particular record we are going to fetch from that API. So if I back to code editor, now inside this v1 folder, we have created a file called singlestudent.php. Now inside this file, we are going to develop that code. So for that, now I am going to copy all the code from this listall.php and paste inside this file. Only we need to configure according to our need. So I am just going to get rid of that and let's say that remove from this if block and if I check from the header, now if I just remove about the debugger mode, here, here we have called access control, allow origin, we have requested and accepted for all the origins and the method type is get method. After these two headers, we have included our database.php file and the student file. After including these two files, we have successfully declared and created the object of that respective classes. Now if I back to our previous file and scroll down, Let's copy this one more line code back to a single student.php and pasting it here. Now this if block also actually execute while getting about the get request type. Else inside this block, let's HTTP response code and we are going to make 503. It means service unavailable. And here we are going to return called ecojson in code and inside this we are going to declare an array and inside this let's say that the key value pair should be something status equal to zero and message is something let's say access denied all we have done with this else block we have to remove this extra and from this spelling now we here we have to work with the if block now to get a particular student record from this table, we need a ID of that. So while making a request to our single student.php, actually we have to pass the student ID. By getting a student ID, we have to make a method and by the help of that method actually, we, we have to get the data from this table and dump all the data to our response. If I back to code editor, now back to student.php and inside this class, we are going to add or make one more method to read a single student data. So let's say that read single student data and here let's say public function get single and let's say student. Now by the help of this method, we have to write some code inside this and by the help of this method, we will return the particular student data with the help of an ID. So let's just start writing about the SQL query. So go inside this method and let's say SQL query equal to, let's say select star from and the table name we have inside our variable called this table name and here we are, we are going to specify about the where condition so where id equal to and this should be a placeholder it means that 
this is the dynamic ID we will pass with the request of API. By getting with the ID, we will return all the data from this table. Now finally, we need to make the prepare statement. This is all about SQL query. So let's say prepare a statement. So here, we are going to use call database connection and we have a prepare method. Now inside this, I am going to pass this SQL query and it will return an object. So let's say simply I am going to make it as obj. You can name it anywhere. obj is user defined object name. And now finally, we are going to bind our placeholder means the id value. As we go at the end, we are going to bind with the value with this placeholder. So let's say that this know this this is the object we have returned so obj and here we have a method called bind param so bind underscore param about this method actually we had studied in our insert data api so scroll down and here we are going to use for the id value as integer value so we have to use i symbol here and we need to bind the parameter so this id so this id returns the id of the student and it will be integer value so here we have to write i symbol and in case of a string value as we have seen in our insert api about that we have to pass as here as is for varchar type or string value so inside this for the integer we have passed i character so finally we have here let's say bind parameters with the prepared statement so successfully we have done now now we are ready to execute our query so let's obj and finally we are going to use called execute method so it will execute what we have written inside this query and get back the value so let's say here data equal to obj and we have a method called get result so it will return all the data what basically we get by the help of this query so after getting the data means after getting the result we are going to return that so return data and we are going to convert this data as fetch associative array so inside our last video we had seen about the use of fetch as hoc method so by getting after getting our data we just convert it into associative array and return all the data from this method so if i copy this method name back to our single student.php and here we have to call but remember while calling this method this method needs a parameter so this id should be initialized or should have a value while calling that now we are ready to call this api but remember we have to pass a parameter while calling the single student so let's say that we have params and we are going to use call json decode and inside this let's say file get contains and inside this we are going to use called php and let's say input so we will pass our body input parameters and that input parameters contain the student id so while using our body parameters so we need to include one more header here so if we back to create.php the first api we have created so we have to copy this header means the content type application json is means json data we are going to pass inside this api so copy that and pasting it here this is all about if i write a comment for that so passing json data or is a data type while calling this api after writing all the headers now let's say that inside this parameter we have a id value so let's say if not empty let's say this param contains an id it means we are ready to execute or call this method so here so by the help of student object a student object have a property called id and inside this id we are just assigning the param id now successfully we have passed that now we are ready to call the method so student 
and this is the method and sorry it just we have to copy that and pasting it here so we have got that now it returns the data so here if I write let's say student underscore data and if I print R for now so print R let's say student data now if I save all these changes back to our postman so copy this call if I copy this API URL go here it should be get request pasting that and this time we have to call our file something go to v1 folder and this is the file so click on rename copy the name of file back to postman and pasting it here so this is all about single student.php so now inside this actually we have to pass the body parameters but if we want to if we want to pass our body parameters so we have to use called the post request so now this time we are not going to do that because if we pass or if we change about the post body parameters should be enabled and we are going to pass the root data inside this body section so either we can change about the request method type or we have to pass id inside this query string something like this so let's see that we are just going to try with the post request type so back to code editor this should be something post and we have to change about the allow method type save all these changes back to postman so this should be post it's all okay if i click on get and press send button here we have error called access denied so change to postman go to body and inside this we are going to pass about the id so let's say this should be id and id let's say we are going to pass the second value also in the header section we have to make called content type and this should be something application json because we are going to pass the body parameters as the json value so all we have done about the needed things while calling with this api click on send button so we have called 500 internal error go to preview and we have no data inside this preview so let's check once code what we have written so back to code editor and if i write about the debugger code so i and i set and inside this let's say that display errors equal to one save all these changes back to postman click on send button so the error we have called undefined method i think that the file we haven't saved that so just go to this file save all these changes back to postman click on send button and we have now data as we go inside the preview section we have id name email and all the informations corresponding with this id if we go again back to browser let's say that we are going to access about the information of this id number one just change the value click on send button and this is all about the data so if i back to code editor to make this response as in proper format so let's comment this ini set back here and let's say that firstly we need to comment this print r let's say echo or firstly we need to check that if not empty got student data so after getting this block list http response code it should be 200 means if we write means ok status and finally we are going to return that so let's echo json in code and inside here i'm going to declare an array inside this let's say status equal to one and all we have data let's say data and inside this all we have data inside this is student data variable so copy that and pasting it here and if suppose let's say student data is empty so in that case we are going to return called http response code and let's say 404 it means that data not found and finally i am going to return let's say echo something json in code and inside this let's say array status 
something less zero and the message we have something let's say a student not found all we have done now we have changed the output as a proper response so back to postman click on the send button now we have data go to pretty and inside this json formatted response as we can see that this is the output response if we change to two send button and this is all about the data of this second number id and also here we can see that the http response code is 200 it means ok status let's say that we are going to pass id number 20 and as we know that id number 20 does not exist so if we click on the send button here we have message call status equal to 0 and student not found and here we have a response code equal to 404 what we have passed inside this http response code method so successfully guys by the help of this video session we have retrieved about the single data information from our database table so if you have any doubt inside this video session guys then please drop your comment i will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day